All right, we are recording. All right, so I I guess I haven't been in front of this room in a little while, so uh, maybe y'all don't know me. So it is, uh, I'm Jim Van Sistine. I'm a principal consultant at Doherty Business Solutions here in Minneapolis. Um, I have been using Tableau, I don't know, gosh, I think Serena and I were talking today. I think my first Tableau conference was in 2013. So they were they weren't versioning by a year at that point. It was like version seven dot something I started on. Um, and somewhere around version ten, they went from ten to the, the year labeling or something like that. Um, so anyway, I've been at this a little while, and uh, I've been part of a planning group for this uh, this local user group for several years. Um, you haven't seen me in front of it for a while because we did virtual meetings for a super long time and. Um, and all those kinds of things. But I'm glad to be back. Glad to have at least some of you here uh, in our office space that doesn't get used nearly nearly enough uh, these days. So agenda for today, welcome. Check, we did that. Um, we'll talk just talk through a few important updates, mostly about finding us now with change platforms. Some of these technical issues are related to platforms. Um, then we have one cool presentation from Peter Kataris about Tableau containers. Our second presenter uh, had a family emergency today and had to uh, had to bounce out. So we will uh, create some optional content there or figure out a new plan. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we're just going to roll with the punches. Uh, for those of you here, we do have some uh, refreshments and snacks and stuff in that in that room. Uh, you can feel free to hang out and drink some of Jordy's beer. Uh, at the end of this meeting, if you so choose, and we'll hang out and network for a while. Right. What's that? Or during. <laughs> or during. Yeah, I'm not. I will not judge. Um, I have a client call I have to go to later, so I'm not gonna have a beer till that's over. <laughs> um, all right. Important updates. We not are not will be moving. We are moving we to a moved. new event platform. We have moved. The switch is sort of happening right if you if you signed up for this one and you're online you already got this you probably you know tell your friends who maybe didn't um because you'll have to go to account and join or rejoin the the tablet user group once you did it um even i messed this up i think i joined twice once with my corporate email and once with the one that serena uses to say hey we need some help with organizing things um so yeah, she yelled at me a little yesterday, like, you got to sign up and register. You're hosting the event. I'm like, I think I did that. No, wrong email. So. I scared you enough. <laughs> yes, she twice. scared me straight, and now I'm registered <laughs> twice. <laughs> um, so really, yeah, go go to the Bevy page and, and sign up and register for the Minneapolis tablet. I'm going to put this in big screen. It'll be easier to see. Um, so you can see where, where the buttons go, how you join the group. Uh, and then you will get lovely emails from the Tableau and Bevy team every month when we have uh, events going on like this. So upcoming events in, kind of in our space right now. Um, next week, two weeks from now, I guess, is the Tableau conference in Las Vegas. Uh, I don't know how many folks are planning to go to that. I know Serena's planning to go. Looks like some of the folks here. Yeah, maybe we could talk about that in our open time slot for sure we could talk about like tips uh, you know tips or planning people how to make get the best out of it answer anybody's specific questions i've been to the conference a couple of times yeah i so, mean a lot of times yeah serena is a conference veteran a las vegas conference veteran i've been to several of them myself i also will not be attending this year but um but yeah it would be a good use of time if people are planning to attend um give some tips, especially if it's your first time, because it can be a little overwhelming. Vegas is a big place. The The first conference I went to was in 2013. It was probably 3,500-ish people. The last conference I went to in 2019 was 20,000 people. So like it grew a lot in that amount of time. <laughs> um, all right, go any, back, back oh yeah, go back. Side. May 16th, Tree Talks data. Also, you forgot to put that May 25th is the TC, is the TC Tug meeting. This. But we don't know where yet. Maybe back here, maybe, maybe someone here, else maybe will host. Else. Yes. 
But that is this meeting. We'll be back here for the TC talk meeting. This is what happens when you make your slides 10 minutes before the meeting. <laughs> a, like, A minus. Steps get. All right. Other announcements or events people want to want to talk about, like other user groups you go to, I things guess, coming up. I guess this is this slide won't work anymore. People can't unmute. Themselves. You can't unmute yourself. So, I can't see if you want to un be unmuted. Um, Can you see that shoot. in the bevy? I have to actually like switch my screen to go see the the chat and everything. I have the power to. I'm just gonna go ahead and talk. I, I don't see a way to unmute an, a particular person. There's this button that says. Oh, I'm gonna... I just unmuted myself. And who is that? Who are you? Ask yeah, who, so who, I couldn't see who was that that spoke that unmuted themselves. <laughs> when, like, I will... it does look like there's, <laughs> like there are a few people that are showing up over here in the sidebar, like maybe they're presenters or something. Yeah, and that, I, it could just be other who have been either admins or posts. That could also be. It actually, it asked me if I tested my, if I tested my audio and video, then it allowed, then it gave me a mute or a start video button. So I guess that's how All I right. ended up in the sidebar. <laughs> I'm going to try it. <laughs> Getting switched back to mute on here. <laughs> I mean, yeah, my press is on. It's pretty high, so I'll go ahead and press it and go for it. All right. I'm going to press it, Jim. Okay, give it a shot. We're going to test the nuclear option here and try to make everyone a presenter. Okay. Did anything happen? Can everyone still hear and see us? Uh -huh. <laughs> <Did> I really... <laughs> <laughs> they still hear us. Right, Thumbs up. Can you can you unmute yourself and speak? To go back to the startup screen and there's text at the button. All right. Posts, and presenters have audio and video enabled. Please note that this has been recorded. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, we will um, figure out exactly how to do that if it's possible so we can have some interaction Let's next see. time. Yeah, I tried that button. It doesn't before. do anything. Yeah, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> that's that's un that's really unhelpful. Very. <laughs> okay. All right. Well. You'll just have to chat. That's cool. Yeah, you guys will just have to use the chat feature, uh, Serena, or I will. Monitor. I will well, monitor. I tested my microphone and then I refreshed the entire meeting, and now I can see it. And that might have been since you made everyone hosts, but refreshing the entire meeting on my browser brought it up. All right, thank okay. you for that tip. Well, anybody that wants to give that a whirl, give it a give it a shot. Otherwise, we know at least a few people can can talk. Yeah, that's cool. We don't like this to be a one way conversation. <laughs> 
Right. All right. It's good that a few people can talk because our next agenda item is get to know a member, which we like to do every month. Um, so I kind of introduced myself a, a little bit earlier, but I can uh, run this imposing gauntlet of questions real quick if people want to know because I haven't been been here or in front of the room for a little bit. And then we'll see if uh, anyone else wants to wants to give it a shot. So I'm Jim Van Sistine. I work for Doherty Business Solutions uh, here in Minneapolis. Um, my role is I am a principal consultant and uh, one of the leaders of what we call our visual analytics competency. So all of the things we do with tools like Tableau and then those other tools on the Magic Quadrant that are also in the VI and visualization space. Um, we kind of work with all of them at Doherty. We're partners with all of them. We work with clients on, on, a, on a variety of different tools, um, which means for me, I don't always get to use Tableau on the regular. <laughs> um, right now is one of those times I've been, uh, interestingly enough, I have a daughter who's a freshman making a applications for business course right now and is starting to learn Tableau at the end of their semester. So she got about a month of, of coursework to do on it. So she has been sending me a flurry of Snapchat questions about how do I do this thing and how do I do that thing and where did you find data for these dashboards on your public profile? I'm like, oh, I'm really out of practice. Like I haven't had my hands on it for a while because my current uh, and previous couple of client engagements have not been Tableau related. So I'm a little bit out of practice. Um, but I do, when I when I have used it with clients, the type of data depends on the client, of course. When I've done uh, personal visits that you find on my Tableau public profile, uh, they are usually fall into the category of related to sports, related to music, or related to weather, because those are things that I find interesting and have uh, places to fetch data for. <laughs> uh, I have been using Tableau for a long time. I think uh, so. 2013 was my first conference, which means I must have been using it about 10 years or a little longer than that. Um, boy, what am I good at at Tableau? What I'm good at these days is um, I, I tell people Tableau is my, my native language in the visualization space. It's the tool I've had my hands on the longest. It's the one I learned on. It's the one I've cut my teeth and spent the most time in. So when I'm working on a client on, say, some other tool and I need and I'm stuck, my strategy for finding the answer is like how what is the level of detail equivalent in said tool right or because like i know the tableau concept and i know how i would solve it in tableau and it's like what is this tableau concept in this other tool that i have to use right now um so i think right now that's what i'm good at is using tableau to anchor me to learning other tools <laughs> it's like the latin it's of... <laughs> and i <laughs> And what I realized because I have, you know, friends and colleagues who are who work at Dory who Tableau is not their native language. It's not their preferred tool. It's not the one they've spent the most time in and they work opposite to that, right? It's like, how do I do this Power BI concept in Tableau? Because that's the way their, their brain is wired. Um, but that is kind of how I find myself using Tableau the most these days or is using my Tableau background and knowledge to help me through problems with the other tools I have been using for the last little bit of time in my day jobs. Um, and and I'm still I'm still okay at that. I have so far been able to answer all the questions my daughter has asked about her, from her uh, freshman college seminar on uh, business applications. So I'm feeling pretty good about that. I haven't lost all of it. Um, which is cool. Yes, she can't be better at it than me. But <laughs> um, she might be better at it than me at some point in time, because if if she decides to stick with it. But she's an English major and she wants to make visualizations about books now. So uh, we're trying to help her source some data about books. So. Um, Should we do a get to know member Yeah, let's. Um, somebody here want to come up? Yeah, anyone who's remote wants to step up and answer these questions as well, if you are able to unmute yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Any takers? Okay, All right. Come from on the phone. Let's do. Um, I can room. unmute myself. <laughs> All right. 
I think that was Danielle. So let's do one from the room and one from the phone. So are you ready, Danielle? Sure. I saw your camera. All right, let's go for it. So my name is Danielle Heimkiss. Um, I work for Unite Us, which was acquired last, uh, acqui last year was it acquired um, Carrot Health, which was where I started. Uh, my role is a senior BI developer. I was previously a Tableau developer um, before the acquisition. I typically work with um, healthcare data, so often um, Medicare data um, specifically, but we do in all different branches and um, now have been working a lot with uh, social care data and social determinants of health. Um, I've been working with Tableau six or seven years now and previously was working with uh, Power BI and before that was trying to build what I build in Tableau and Excel. That didn't go very well. Um, I spent a lot of time waiting for things to load. Um, what I would say I am good at in Tableau is making Tableau do things it wasn't meant to do. Um, ans uh, uh, answering those asks of, can you make Tableau do X, Y, Z? And it's like, well, technically no, but actually, yes. My biggest struggle is... Um, the size limitation that we can have, you can have with Tableau when you get into uh, stacking data for customers. So you're ending up with billions of rows and trying to get things to still perform correct, uh, at a timely manner. All right. Danielle, do you know Pearl Ishawumi? I do know Pearl. Okay. Please tell <laughs> I work with I Pearl that. quite often actually. <laughs> Thank you for volunteering. Yeah, thank you. All right, you yeah. want to you can come up and since the microphone and camera are here. Sure. <laughs> you can stand there or we can just turn the yep. camera on you if you want. Hey, um, my name is uh, Dr. Rick Lamb. Um, I work for Bloomington Public Schools um, as a data scientist. Um, my degree is in um, educational research from the data um, and like testing. And so I do a lot more analysis than data viz stuff. But for the district, we use Tableau. And I, I just started in like this uh, November and I've barely used Tableau at all before that. And so I'm just like trying to get my feet wet with all this. Um, so it's, it's run by our um, data and tech teams, but I'm transitioning over to me taking over more of the Tableau roles um, on there is primarily like, uh, student test data, student attendance data, behavior data, all things like that, relating to what teachers and other educators need to see for their student for their students. Um, yeah, that's what pet data I analyze. Um, I was like so much what you said, like your native language is Tableau. My native language is R because I do a lot of the analysis and I try to like, okay, Tableau does this. How would I do it in R? Hopefully, Tableau can figure that out too. Um, and so how long I've been using Tableau is so about six months. I kind of looked at it a little bit before that for the past like year when I just saw stuff like in grad school a little bit, but not, I haven't really built anything until like pretty recently. Um, what are you good at in Tableau? Oh, nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> Picking up on it quickly, I guess. Uh, and then features and functions you struggle with. Um, the thing that I've had the most hard time right now is we have multiple different data sources and um, servers that we get to compile our information from across the district. And I always seem to screw up where I'm get, pulling the data from. And I constantly need to talk to the, the data and tech teams to be like, okay, why is this just, why did it just fail on me? Right. So that's the hardest part for me. Sounds like you need a big catalog. Oh. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Do, so you don't see like, no, no, no. can't hear. No, I, I do like the test design and all that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, so with that, I think we have our, our presenter, uh, Peter, is going to come and talk to us about Tableau containers. So maybe bear with us for a minute while we hopefully. If you, if you want to present from right there, you sure can. You can. I'll, yeah. I mean, I'll step up there. I think my share screen is great. So that's. Let's see if we can do it with that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. 
Your share screen is gray. We definitely got more people here in the. Is it just? Right, I just need you a host. Oh, I should be good actually. This is user error. Okay. So your share screen's okay. Let's see if we can get the HDMI. I do. Plug you into that projector. I'll just move this one on the way because it's connected to the. <laughs> okay. Come on, the entire screen. All right, is that working? Yes. Yeah. That was almost there. All right. Cool. Hey, everybody. Um, my name is Pete Kataris. Uh, I work at Pearson, actually the GED testing group. So we work with test data and learners, users. So you and I are definitely talking after this because <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to build a data pipeline. You know each other already. We uh, we just met each other and now we're going to become better friends. <laughs> um, so super, super stoked about that. Um, I, I guess for you guys who work in last month's meeting, um, I was able to bring uh, our youngest Tug member. So um, <laughs> this is my son and he's he's reviewed my slides, made sure they're up to date and ready to go. But just want to make sure you guys know he's doing well and approved. Sorry, he can't be here. Um, and that about containers today. And uh, I like the containers. It's, um, I guess we usually cover this with our analysts because people get so excited. They've built their first visualizations. They have the data all organized and then they want to share it. And they just start throwing it on a dashboard and stuff gets kind of all confusing on top of each other. There's tiles and all that sort of thing that start to pop up. So what I want to talk about first though is kind of why containers are important. Um, we moved into a house about six months ago or previous said individual who joined our family, we needed more space. Uh, we were in a duplex, so one bedroom, one bath, um, and then our house now has a pantry, which I was totally stoked about. We said, yep, I like to cook. I can have all the tomato sauces, pasta, ingredients, uh, and we were ready to go. And like any good pantry, in one week, it becomes <laughs> um, a mess. So I can't find what I want, I buy it again, and then my wife finds it, and now we have four cans of what the one thing, or it just gets becomes all over the place. So that's, in my opinion, kind of what happens with Tableau dashboards, is that when you have the visualizations that are great, you're excited, ready to share them, and you can get it put together in um, what look like floating tiles, or even just dropping them in, but through like the management over time as asks come in and people want new things, new things added, it just starts to become convoluted and things don't kind of work out the way that you had, had anticipated. And then there's different screen sizes. So floating objects get distorted, all those sorts of things. It's a little bit all over, all over the place. Um, and that's where I think containers can really help because everything has its spot. You can move it around then um, just with sizing. And there's a couple of features that make it much more easier to line up things. So all the details are kind of in the right spot. Um, and, all those sorts of things. So that's why I'm a fan of containers and it's one of the things that we cover because uh, it's tough to manage a lot of dashboards over the long run if um, you don't use them properly or in a kind of a systematic approach. Um, hey Pete, I don't mean to throw a wrench yeah. in, your, in your groove here, but I just realized that you're, we're seeing like the note, like a presenter uh, maybe on yeah. this. <laughs> Not that one. The, the Toggle? Display settings. Display settings or... So now only we can see it in the room like that. Super. But <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone else online. Yep. So interesting. If you guys know what's coming up next, don't 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 jump ahead. I'll get there. I promise. I promise that the next slide's gonna come up. Um, sometimes you might slide that way over. Sometimes you guys know something embarrassing also. Um, I'm scared to. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to screw it up. I think there's a way to. to there is. Kept not subtitles. Um, you can hide presenter view. Is it high presenter view? Um, oh, yeah. I, I see what you're saying. Hide it. There. Yeah, cool. Okay. 
We're good. Remove subtitles. <laughs> Wow. All right. Thank you. No, no, no. That was no. If that's the, the hiccup, that's that's nothing. No, um, you're good, you're good. Cool. So I guess to pick up, these are just some of the things that I was just kind of mentioning, kind of why why we want to use um, containers for uniformity. Um, it's, it helps to adjust one of the different screens. Basically, like you're you're telling Tableau how to handle a lot more situations instead of just having it look kind of in the right spot on the screen and then Tableau having to guess. Uh, when some of these variables come into the situation. Um, and then, like I said, for me, it's the biggest thing is that when we start to have to manage dashboards, uh, it's a lot more easier to manage those sorts of things. So this will this will be another interesting one. Can I get over? I wanted to share this one real quick. So this is, this is a dashboard that we paid somebody for, um, unfortunately. And it wasn't until after um, I'd been, I was just getting started on, Tableau. So after like a year, I figured out I'm like, and I had to redo all this. And I don't know if you guys can see all the little containers or all the little objects are all like moving around and stuff like that. The person who said he was a consultant didn't put anything in containers. Nothing was evenly distributed. Like basically all the best practices that I would have anticipated that I now know about didn't happen. Um, so I am. It's. <laughs> uh, um, nobody from this area so uh, but but that was one of the things that i guess maybe i i got burnt by nine containers so i was like okay i'm i'm figuring containers out well um so i guess just i just want to talk quick I, before i start doing a little bit of a demo the one downside is yeah it takes a little bit more time things things don't quite float or kind of move exactly where you would want them to um because it's a little more rigid Darn it. No, that's all right so um a slightly more restricting in that regard but with that said let's just kind of mess around real quick this really comes from um i think i wrote his name down colin colin harvey does that does that sound right i can jump through it he was he was the iron viz winner in 2016 but he has a great um curtis harris my apologies um he has he has a great video on kind of breaking down the rules and kind of great ways to work with them this is what kind of really unlocked the power for me um in with the containers so just real quick i, I guess yeah we'll kind of talk through the dashboard building process with con containers um i think this this pane on the left has become super super more helpful than just like dropping uh, the sheets in. So really kind of setting up the size. We'll talk about the horizontal, the vertical, and the blank ones. Um, and then the layout one is is huge too. Just with the X, Y coordinates, it's a lot more trying to line things up visually and just kind of making sure it's really you plug it in and go. So it's those are, those are little hacks that really kind of help with the overall process. And then I like the item hierarchy as you start building up the dashboards, things get layered and behind and over and you can't quite click on them. So um, going to the hierarchy is a way to kind of click on the specific items without having to kind of touch them specifically in the dashboard. So I think those are um, super helpful tricks that with containers you can really leverage. Um, one thing I wanted to just just kind of do a quick with the horizontal and vertical containers is kind of just wanted to explain these real quick. So I dropped a horizontal horizontal container. You can see it's on the dashboard around it with the, the, the border um, and then if I drop the holding the shift key I said this is a whole, whole horizontal so so that's that's what our, our horizontal container is gonna gonna do you'll you can line up the uh, graphs the bars whatever you want in a horizontal fat fashion and then vertical I'm it's surprise surprise it's gonna it's just, just gonna do it the other way so um, ver vertical one of the things that I did find out actually and going through this is that if i were to let me just drop this in here so there's one blank in there right now i didn't know i didn't know this but like this is a vertical container but i can if you look in the lower left the vertical will change to a horizontal so i guess you have to be a little careful in particular on the first one um that was that kind of caught me by surprise a little bit i didn't either um it's real, I guess one of the things to definitely making sure where you drop the items is, is I guess we'll get into that in a little bit, but 
So, all right, I have I have a dashboard that I think we'll just try to we'll just try to do some highlights. I don't, um, and then in the interest of time, we'll, we'll get as far as we can, and then we can kind of uh, move on from there. You save all the time you need because we have a lot of time. Yeah. Here, so. so I should. Well, I, I won't force you guys to so like the full hour and a half version that I had to cut down to get into the twenty minutes. I need to learn magic. But. Why would you do it? <laughs> Absolutely, and and we'll see like the tiled feature. So we haven't seen it yet pop up here, but that's one of kind of like the arch nemesis. Like, if if you are, this is gonna be bad, but if you're like a DC superhero, like that, like they're like the anti-hero that you never want to see and you always want to get rid of. Um, so so that'll pop up, and we'll kind of try to get rid of that and show you one or two things there. So for me and like our team, what we do is is we really kind of think about how we want to lay out in like the grid system. So in our, our example that we're going to build, it's going to be kind of yep, a header, a band across the top, and then two two, two charts, essentially. So so one one and then two uh, two, two by one. Um, and we'll just do it on the standard size. But we we start with painter, drop it in. And then like I said, with the layout here, I'll go and make sure it starts in the upper left hand corner and we said this is i think a thousand by 800 that's right in so now we have one one container that fits the whole area um did you put it in as floating initially i put it, it's floating right now actually yeah okay. mm -hmm. yep and, and then for containers i find it easier to always drop um some blanks in so i'm going to put these around with a border just so we can see them a little bit as you get more familiar and comfortable with it, then you don't really need the borders, but this just helps you see. Okay, so we have one vertical container with two blanks in, in here. Um, as I mentioned, we're going to have uh, a, this is a horizontal. So both of our graphs will go in here. Again, I'm dropping blanks in here for, for now. And then I'm gonna put our band up on top of this. So I'm just holding shift, and that's what's changing it from this floating to kind of um, locking it into the sheet. So this is gonna be in between. I guess if you look right here on our layout, see how we're building this out. So it's gonna be in between the blank and the, hor the, the horizontal. So I will, what did I say? Drop my band here, and that's gonna put there. We'll work on sizes next. But basically, so the header is going to be up here, the band, and then the two. What am I looking at my notes? Why do I drop my charts? Charts and quick here. So I'm just going to drop it in the the, the middle for now. And what will happen is the sizing is all off, and eventually I'll move the. If I look at my container, I have a horizontal, and there's two charts that are in, in it, and then above the horizontal is the band, and all this sits in a, a vertical. So the hierarchy is being built out. Ah. Our anti hero. It's kind of like when someone draws something upside down, right? And you watch and you're just like, I have no idea what you're, what you're drawing and it looks like shit. And mm -hmm. then you're like, just wait. And then you flip it and it's like, ta da. Somebody did it with like, uh, everything was white on a white background. And like they knew what was all going on. And then yeah. they just changed like the background to black. And it's like, all for, so um, this is, as, so when, when we dropped in these graphs, then Tableau is trying to be smart and cool and be like, oh, you probably want a legend on it. Well, it doesn't really know where to put the legend, so it creates this tiled object. And this tiled object is a mix of all these other things that just really get convoluted and it's tough, it's tough to manage in my opinion. So um, we'll put the legend in eventually, but I take this out and try to get rid of it. If I see a tiled on it, I'm gonna delete it and get it off the dashboard. Um, there's two, I, I guess, the the main way to do it is through the re remove container. That's going to remove the whole hierarchy of all six, seven of these uh, items. If I were to do just, actually, I lied. That's just going to remove the tile. The remove from dashboard will remove them all, which is what I want. So I'll remove them all. It says, are you sure there's a couple in there? Yep, let's get them all. So they're all, all gone, and I'll, the tile object's gone, and I'll add it back a little bit later. All right. So we're going to keep going a little bit. We're going to put a little title up at the top. So this is the flagship store. And 
going to make this white for now. And then what's going to happen? I'm going to remove this top, this top box here. So, so, so now I have, if, if, if I make this a color, you'll see I'm starting to get like the top of our dashboard. Um, and then our bands are starting to come together. And then we'll work on this next part here. So here's where our charts are. So now I still have these extra ones on the side. So these extra blanks, I'll take these out because I no longer need them. I have a good sense of where the sheets are. Um, one of the things too, gray is, I didn't really, I, I guess gray is for the sheets. If you double click, it's gonna go up in the hierarchy. So right now you can see I'm on tree one. If I double click, it's blue, which now means it's in a, I'm selecting the, the container and you can see in the hierarchy, I've jumped up to the whole horizontal. Uh, additionally, it's like, okay, can I get this? In? Yeah, that's cool. But I'm, the better way is to is to, to really just distribute evenly. So if you add a third or fourth, those sorts of things, it all does it dynamically and kind of locks it into place. Um, and then I want this in entire views. Same with this one here. So, all right. Um, one or two more th things. Ooh, how did I do that? Okay. So one of the things now is let's let's put our legend back in. So on this one specifically, we're going to add um, our color legend. So I don't know if you saw in the lower left, our tile item was created, and our legend's out there, but you can't really see it. It's back behind those ones. So I have to go find it in the hierarchy and see, like I said, it's there. So what I'm gonna do is I take this to, to floating so I can at least see it, move it around. I'm gonna get rid of um, my arch, my anti-hero, remove those. So I'm keeping that clean. And now the goal is to put this kind of by our, our graph so we know Kind of what the sales are now if you were just to float it different screens um it starts to get moved around and it gets very manipulated so the way that we handle that is to put a basically we're going to kind of replicate the title as a text box all in a vertical con container so if i show that i've dropped the vertical container now in here i'm going to move our I hope that worked. Yeah. Um, and then let's let's hide this title. So again, looking at I have my vertical container, and then I have the graph inside there. Now for the title, then what what I'll add it. You can see it gray just a little bit up at the top. And this was subcategory. And then for this one, oh, I did it. I forgot one thing. Because it's in a container, it's pretty easy. So I wanted to put a horizontal. I'll drop this in the, the horizontal so then I can put this guy on this side of the whole horizontal. There we go. So so now again, looking at the, the, the layout, here's our horizontal container, which is all in this vertical container of the tree and the title. So now as I move, like like sheet sizes and all this sort of stuff, it's gonna it's really gonna size it with it and um, it kind of locks it into those specifics more or less. So that's one. Um, Do you have a, a there's there's a blank beneath the tree map? Yeah, there's 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 not actually. It's um basically there's not enough space to fill this whole one and. I believe it's because it's fixed right now. So it's kind of locked on the height. There we go. So now that's going to stretch it out to the rest of the container. Before it was locked at a certain like 700 pixels or something like that. So I unlocked it. So now it would take up the bottom piece. That would... I So what I had selected is I basically I unselected this fixed feature. Yeah. Did you fix it, Pete? I don't. I missed it or did it do that automatically? I think it did it automatically. Yeah. Yeah, so like if if I went to here 
it's gonna now see this container has that that white area mm -hmm. and it's it does that automatically i don't know either it's, well it's, i think it resize it, it. You do anything to resize it. You can yeah. grab the line to fit that vertical in or that horizontal line. Oh. It says you will you want it this size and it fits. So I'll keep it there for you. Yeah. yeah. Tricky. Uh yeah. So the unspoken things that you just yeah. Really... <laughs> and I can't see it. That that box Sorry. is it filled in with gray? This it's this gray. one up here? No, well the one that you just got rid of by unfixing the height. It had little it, it, it has, has like diagonals. the hatch yeah. mark. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just, I, I've struggled with this so many times and you just presented a solution. So I want to make sure that the, <laughs> you just still solved the problem that I've had and not some other problem. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, yeah. The other way would be is if you have it the height that you want, but you still have those lines, you can drop in like a white blank section that then takes up the rest of that. But um, it still looks the same to the end user. It's just as like, the designer you would know okay there's another object in there that takes up that space now um, um hey pete while well, you are yeah kind of good stopping point here someone had asked if you could repeat or just like review when you had the middle portion between the two blanks yeah we were first building yeah not saying you need to recreate that but maybe just like you know, speak over what you, what you're kind of talk. Through yeah. Talk through it. Yeah. Um, so there was the middle section. So the, the dashboard had a vertical and then there was two blanks with that then created this line in the middle. And what that, I guess for me, at least allows that when I drop a sheet or a container, it's I, like, I can be very specific on where I want it in between those two. And that kind of sets the rules then, or kind of, how it operates it prevents me from dropping it um and creating a tiled object like there's a much wider area to actually hit as far as what you want sort of thing yeah. so it's really kind of like setting up the cones so that you can park mm -hmm. it right in there and then you get rid of the kind of how i would articulate it yep cool. so, yep good question chat got to know you're still out there um <laughs> I just have one more thing, which I, I so uh, again, I didn't learn this. It's on my slides, um, or I didn't come up with this one. But in order to create some lines and borders, you can you can do your um, I forgot how I do it actually. Even I think blank and then a color, and then you make it real tiny, and then it's a floating object. All those weird sorts of things. But um, in, in in order to to do that, I guess padding scares me. But I found that uh, you can actually use it. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, what's it? I had to watch a video on like why inner versus outer padding. Like, what were the differences? But what I found is that in doing this, you can create oh, a background color for you here. The aha moment is gone now. But you can start to add kind of create these little lines that then break up. Hey, okay, like where is the the dashboard and where are the different parts? And because it's an object and you're using container, it's it's I think a great little hack, which um, a gentleman at PH Data is the one who I learned that from one of his blog posts. So yeah, I used to spend lots of time just trying to put like I have this whole image library of like lines and blocks that would just fill the space, and I could set to one pixel a fixed height, and then they did they were like oh containers and you can do this <laughs> oh padding and containers is so good like, it saves so much time from trying to get that spacing and ordering mm -hmm. that color and just jump the bottom a little bit and pixels and there you go. Nice yeah yeah absolutely <clears throat> um so well I, that's about it we're pretty close it doesn't look the same but that wasn't the intent to be to make it the same we're gonna be different today but just want to walk through some of the things um just looking at my notes i think that covers it so my last pitch would be like use use containers be careful where you drop things get rid of those tiles and and i mean this is such an underutilized tool in my opinion is the hierarchy so um always kind of be checking that to see where things are pete how much planning do you do ahead of time when you're like when your strategy is so container focused like do you find yourself like even just getting up you know 
pencil and paper and being like, okay, I need yeah. a vertical here and a horizontal here, nested in a, you know, and all of that. Yeah, really well? that's um, that's that's a good question. I mean, I I think part of so I plan it out, but not necessarily from a container aspect. More from just a des dashboard design. Kind of here, here's where the big things are. Here's where like the sub metrics are, and that sort of thing. Um, and then what 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 I've found is in doing this a couple times, like for this one for this one, I forgot to add a horizontal. It took me five six seconds to kind of put that one back in. So I don't get too deep into the planning process. I really kind of start at the highest level of there's gonna be big ones, small ones, and then that's kind of the step one. And, and then as I dig into each one of those groups, then it's like, oh, I need an extra. Or there's um, actually one of the things that is if there was a third one, and this is where like if there was this third one in here, and I wanted, okay, these two to be evenly spaced and this one to only be like have half of it, then it's like, oh, I should probably add one more container that gets these two together, and then I could evenly distribute just those two. So, but but I won't think of that when I'm designing the dashboard on paper. I'll think about it when I'm like yeah. into the weeds of it all. To what extent do you guys have you guys created templates? I yeah, I tried. Um, I find like I find for our needs, it's not it's not. Everything seems to be a little bit more like bespoke and like particular, and yeah. they don't really add like. There's a lot of things that they don't quite fit that well into templates. So I just like here's this fixed you know width and height for our header, and like this is where you designate where all the filters go. Yeah. Like, and then draw the line there. Have you guys done that at all? We haven't. No, that's a good idea though. I, I think from a point of like uniformity and just like user adoption, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, Even the I've, I've tried to do that a couple times. And, yeah, and then you know, screen size. Yeah. There's a, I feel like there's a, all there's just always some nuance that you didn't think about. We're like, well, shit, that template won't work, work for this or that. So I'm just curious, like, if other people are like, yeah, these great templates. And I've saved a couple, like, 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 Tableau workbooks ready to go with with that dashboard, but yeah, hasn't hasn't worked out as I had planned. That unite us, we have, but like, they're um, the template in a sense is more. We have a header, you have a footer, and filters are on the left hand side, and then like you have a big open white space kind of in the middle to work with, um, and like going off of that, it makes it really consistent, and like your flow from dashboard to dashboard can be really really nice. It can be frustrating when you're like, well, I would like more space. But you just have to figure, like, it makes you then really think about, like, what really needs to be on this one versus could we make it into two? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great point. Our, our people ask for more and more and more. And yeah. if we had a template, it'd be like, nope, this is all you got. You got five. <laughs> Sorry, man. You can also fix the width and then make the height, mm -hmm. you know, right? Because maybe there are some dashboards that need to be more like infographic style and you're still actually operating within that template. Absolutely. That's yeah, that's kind of what I've seen with some of our clients is it's like, it works to make a few like, templates, like here's yep. your filter pane on the left, your filter pane on the right, like header, footer, whatever those things are that are required. And then maybe like, this is a pretty standard HD resolution size, and this is like the infographic eight and a half by eleven layout. Mm -hmm. And then almost like you were doing here at the beginning, just sort of park some containers so that it's it's like, yep, it's a big white space, and you can really do whatever you want in there. Delete all the containers if you want to, right? But if you frame it with the, oh yeah, there's like like I should put six things in there or six or seven things. Like they don't have to be exactly this size, but kind of like. We would carve it up a few different ways so you're like oh yeah i think mine will fit here versus like you end up here's the template and somebody still builds that first thing you show it's like i can fit all these number boxes in there they'll fit but you have to sort of deliberately undo a lot of the template to, to do that mm -hmm. versus like i should probably think about this more in the like what are the six or seven things or four things that should go on this page yeah and what's cool is that i've seen like yeah when you, because you do need blank, blank spaces in there, right? Because if you don't put anything right. in a container, you, just, you can't yeah. even tell like, yeah. what's what. 
So it might be like use a, those as like the play, like put text boxes. Yeah, like a like container lines. with a text box. Like, it's like put, put something here, put yeah. something <laughs> here, put something here. Right. A lot of times when I go, I'll put blanks in as placeholders for all the individual views. Yeah. And I'll make them gray. Yeah. And then as I build out those views, I'll add small things because I usually have an idea. Yeah. Right. So like specifically, I'm gonna put, you know, the area chart here. Like whatever. But then I know what. Yeah. I know that something's not gonna fit. Right away, right? Yeah. If you build it, and it's like, oh, but that's not going to fit with, you know, I've got four other things that need to sit next to it. And so I can reevaluate that time to the dashboard. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I just want to give credit where credit's due quick. So, again, I'm not going to share my screen, but yeah. So, Curtis Harris, it's a 30 minute video. If you want to get more, he, he, he explains this probably smoothly and calmly than I just did. But um, it's really great. And then Spencer, uh, well, I would say from PhD, he is the lines was one of the things that I hadn't really come across until I had seen his blog post. So, um, and then lastly, yeah, you guys, this has been fun. I appreciate the community and um, just hanging out and getting to know more people and sharing stories, what works, what doesn't work, because we have a small group, so it's always nice to bounce ideas off the larger group. So feel free to connect, email, all that yeah, fun stuff. Do you have? Um... If anybody has questions um, from the virtual audience, chat, and mute yourself, there is one who's asking if you could paste your references yeah. in the chat. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yes. Why don't I just. Um, and FYI for everyone, this is being recorded. We don't know exactly where uh the <laughs> that's true we don't know exactly where it's being don't recorded know recording this um that's true because tableau used to have a dedicated youtube channel for all mm -hmm. of the tug recordings and now they're no longer doing that um and youtube we would just put it on youtube but unless you have over a certain number of subscribers you can't upload anything that's longer than 20 minutes oh. so if we can get to a thousand subscriber subscribers <laughs> We can have our own YouTube channel um, and post these up up there, but right now we're going to have to get creative around where we actually host these, you know, hour plus, you know, two hour long. But we'll we'll figure it out. So, and once we do, we'll let y'all know. Fabulous. All right. Um, do you, go ahead. Yeah. Any any final questions for Peter before we? Let him take a sigh of relief. Yeah, that was that was really that was great. Yeah. It was one of the things I, especially the tile, with so much when uh -huh. I first started, and it was like the, probably the single most frustrating thing for me in learning Tableau. And you you showed it inadvertently, like you added the legend, and then you're like, look at what this created. Like I added one item, and it created a tile container and like three containers. Like you had to click three layers deep to find the thing you added. Yeah. It's like I only wanted one thing. Why <laughs> did you make four layers for me to add this one thing? And it's so hard to undo it. Mm -hmm. um, once I kind of got my head around it and I could use containers the way you demonstrated now like that I wanted to. Now it's now I'm using another tool and I'm trying to find it's like I really wish I had that That's same capability it. to just I want these things to be together, I want them to size together, I want them to move together. And it just isn't there, and it's really so. It's really frustrating now. <laughs> I want to be able to do this, and I can't. <laughs> so, so just to be clear, you never want the tiled stuff. You always get rid of it if it pops up. Personally, I do. Yeah. yeah. That so yeah that I won't even tell you the hell I went through that consultant <laughs> sheet. Mm -hmm. There was like oh, yeah. I want to say like I had to like almost have the layout like two thirds of my mm -hmm. screen just because there was so many that had been built up. From him, from him, just dropping in stuff, and then three get created, yeah. and three get created, and yeah. that, that's it's not the best dashboard because that's like there's like I don't know 15, 20 metrics on there, but every time it gets dropped, like that's why it kind of snowballed into that effect. So did anybody ever rebuild that one? Um, it, that's like the halfway step. So yeah, I okay, built it. Working on it. Yeah. Or it's <laughs> it's better where they're all in containers now and all space. So yeah, but. Um, but if there is like a, a bit of a divide, a friendly divide in the community, like over tiled versus floating. Oh, yeah. yeah.
yeah, for sure. Every like it's yeah. like one of those things where everyone has an opinion about it. Yeah. But it's varying degrees of strong. Uh well thank you, Pete. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you guys. This is fun. So Jim, you want to hop back up? Yeah. Or do you have to well I have to leave her on the floor? So okay. I gotta Feel any questions about the Pebble Conference? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have one arts. more tip to add about containers and the top, like when it gets tiled. When you're in containers and you can drag the line across, if those little arrows show up, like recommending you can line it up here, don't do it because that turns it into a tiled container. It creates another container, yes. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, that is a good tip. Like it, it, it does sometimes create. It tries to make assumptions on what you want, and it's not always right. <laughs> All right. So we did. We have a little uh, gray area here because our other presenter had to back out. So Tableau Conference is coming up. It's in a couple of weeks. Uh, we at least here had a couple of uh, hand raisers. People who are attending. Uh, if you're, you know, virtual and you want to type in the chat, maybe. Just a, like, are you going? Is it your first time, right? <laughs> like, especially if it's your first time and you've never been there. Um, it's a little different probably than the last the last one or two that I went to, but um, a few tips I would have for attending a conference of this magnitude in Vegas, especially, is um, wear comfortable shoes, <laughs> like mm -hmm. form over fashion, especially in this case, because you will log a lot of miles uh, to, you know, even if you're staying at the Mandalay Bay where the conference is, you are going to log a lot of walking miles in a given day. Um, those places are large, <laughs> and, and uh, the where you sleep, is, where you sleep is uh, several thousand feet of casino space away from where you meet, <laughs> and, um, and there's really no way to get around them. So uh, they're very big, and you will be standing and walking. A lot during the course of those days uh, so make sure that you're ready for that um, I saw a couple things on Twitter that where people recommended like lip balm it's very dry in the desert dry. those buildings are blow, always blowing air in to try to keep them cool and circulated and you will be surprised how fast Some people dry out. Bring their own humidifiers. <laughs> so that is one I wouldn't have thought of until I saw someone tweet it. It's like, yeah, you're right. Like I always have it, but that's a very good, uh, very good first tip because it's very dry there, and you're. Uh, uh, they do keep you pretty well fed. Like there's always a place to fill a water bottle or get something to drink, uh, grab a snack. There's not enough coffee places in the morning. Yeah, like well, yeah, right. Coffee. The conference coffee is usually in a few places where breakfast is served. Yeah, I mean like latte, like real. And coffee. if you want <laughs> that, then you are again so no. divided. There are several thousand square feet of casino space between you and the coffee shop, and then back to the <laughs> to the conference facility. Sometimes. Um, any other like I know some of you have been there before. Like, what are your sort of first timer tips that you My, would have? Um, well, first of all, so I think that. If you haven't checked it out, Sarah Bartlett, she always writes the, you know, know before you go. Um, I'll, I'll find the, the, the link or if someone has it handy and you want to put it in the chat. But she writes like a super long post that contains pretty much everything. But my favorite tips or like the most important ones for me are to not over schedule yourself, both from a session perspective and from a social perspective for two reasons. One, because you're going to get burnt out. Like, you need to actually like, build in some time for rest and to do nothing. And hi, Christopher. <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, the second reason is that you never know what is going to happen at any given moment. So you need to leave some time for the universe to just kind of present opportunities for you. And I usually try to prioritize meeting people in person because a lot of times the sessions are recorded, that content is, is out there, you can consume it on 
another time, but the one thing that you cannot do is get face time with many of the people that, that are there. So I try to prioritize just like meeting people, you know, and you know, cultivating those relationships. And like, I um, tell the user group, so the, the Floral Lodge twins have joined Moxie Analytics. Happened literally because we, it just so it just so happened that we ended up walking in the streets of Vegas at 2 a.m. and I slipped on a freaking ham sandwich. <laughs> it literally was the catalyst to where we are today. And so if I had it, I love time and space in my schedule for that to happen. Has been so. So don't overschedule. Leave 2 a.m. open. <laughs> yes. That's leave that spot open. Watch out for them. It sounds yeah. like it went well for you. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm going to be on the lookout now. <laughs> I hurt my knee. <laughs> um, that is that is a good one. And the, you know, Tableau has this this really good community. Like we come together here, we meet. Uh, there's this whole conversation that happens and has been happening for years on Twitter. Um, and then you will go to the conference, especially if it's your first time, and you see these people like. It's like, oh my gosh, like this person, they're like this expert. And you can get a little starstruck, I think, sometimes. I did my first time of like, I can't talk, to, like that person is like a superstar. I can't just go talk to them, right? And I didn't know what to say. Um, and it was probably my second or third Tableau conference where I, like, I was over that and I kind of recognized the value of what Serena just said. And like, I, you know, I just got to go and introduce myself and talk to people. And most of them to a person were like, what the hell? Like, we're just people, right? Like, <laughs> go talk to them. If you like, if you, yeah, like, um, like, you know, you go there and you, see, yeah, you go there and you see Curtis Harris and you're like, oh my God, he's like, he taught me all these things I ever knew about Tableau and he doesn't even know me. And like, he doesn't want to talk to me. I'm telling you, he does want to talk to you and he does want to hear that he taught you everything he knows about Tableau. And he will take the time to be like, that's awesome. Let's chat for a few minutes. Um, everyone is super, super welcoming. So don't let yourself be overwhelmed or starstruck by like, that's Ken Fleur Lodge and he's the best Tableau person on the forums I've ever met. Like go talk to him because he's also one of the nicest five humans I've ever met in my lifetime. Right, like so, you if you see people and you're like I really want to talk to them because they their blog taught me something or what I've just like literally just go tell them and um, it, you'll be better for it and probably their conference will be better for it too because yeah. you know people like to hear that so um, yeah. other logistical tips um, this year they're not doing the like the pre-registration used to be you could reserve a spot at the sessions that you want to. They're not doing that this mm -hmm. year. It's first come, first serve. So. Yeah, I was gonna say that too. If there's a session you wanna go to, go early. Go, go early, there's <laughs> probably gonna be a few. And I don't know, this, this isn't hearsay, but it's not not hearsay. <laughs> I heard from a reliable source that everything is going to be silent disco. Like that everything, like where where you are going to have to put a headset on at every session, aside from the what's in the like the keynote area. I like I was great question. I was thinking like, are they going to have multiple presenters like in the same room? Because they used to have it. The, so there's the data village, which is kind of like the heart of the conference, and they used to run sessions in these open spaces yeah. where there was a lot of talking, sessions happening kind of right next to each other. It wasn't a dedicated quiet space for a particular presentation. Um, and so they had, you know, the headphones and it was just connected directly to the audio from the person that you're physically standing in front of. So you could see them and hear them, but just through the headphones. So I heard from a reliable source that they're that all of the non keynote sessions are going to be like that potentially because they might be having like on one stage in the same room two presentations going at the same time i i like really hope that like somebody somewhere is like this is a terrible idea <laughs> um so if you are like depending on where your level of like you know risk tolerances for germs 
you might want to bring your own headphones. I, I mean, actually, I don't even know. Maybe bringing some wet, like some Clorox wipes or something <laughs> would be a better idea. Well, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, interesting. That's a good <laughs> one. So, so yeah, kind of in piggybacking those, not the silent disco part, but you know, plan your schedule. Sometimes the lines are long. Get you can't reserve a seat, so. I would sometimes skip sessions like I'm just going to go to nothing for an hour because I really want to go to this thing that's an hour later and then I could kind of just go camp out in the area of where that session was going to be held and I, would, I knew that I would be there and I would be able to get in and get a seat. Um, again, almost all these presenters are when I when I did present there, I left on you know, also a buffer hour after. Like I wasn't trying to get myself to some other session because there's a line of people who want to talk to you, ask you questions that they weren't comfortable asking. And so if you have those, not comfortable asking in a big room, in my in the past, the presenters have been very open. You just go up there and talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, ask them your question in a small group setting. So if there's somebody that you really want to see or you really want to hear from or you really want to talk to and they're presenting, just go to their session, leave yourself a little time on either side. And just, you know, like Serena said, the, there's 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 almost more value in just meeting and making that connection with a person than whatever you would have learned in the next hour in a session you can go watch later on. And have fun. Like, you guys, the Tableau Conference is so much fun. It's fun, like, yeah. Like, tech conferences are kind of, like, most of them kind of suck. <laughs> this one is really fun. It is just a fun time. I guess I've never been to you guys. So after, I guess, has it changed after Salesforce has purchased them or is it still relatively similar? And the reason I ask is because my friends that work in Salesforce and their conferences are, I mean, on like um, over the top. Yeah. Like, yeah, they have like, con like concerts and just all that sort of thing. So, yeah. I, but, I, but that but, was before. That is that yeah. not a new thing because of Salesforce. Tableau's been doing that the whole time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Concerts. Yeah. I mean, who did they have? The was it New Orleans? Oh, who yeah. was that? New Orleans, they had Trombone Shorty. I remember seeing. Yeah. Last, in 2019, they brought in um, um, the Salt and Pepper. Yeah. Uh, what? Cinderella. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that, that decade is fading from my family. Yeah, and they had, I mean, they've had, they've like hired DJs to commission like special tableau music for some of these things. Um, the one in Seattle was like, it was like Coachella, like a Coachella lineup because they had the whole area around the Space Needle and there were, uh, there was probably half a dozen bands or more playing that night. So it was like, Sir mix a lot was there and like this so they have the same kind of thing like it's a big the first time i went and came back but and the first one i went to was relatively small and it was sort of like a fun tech conference uh that was dc in like 2013. um then the one in seattle i came back from and that so in the, between those two years it went from like 3,000 people to 10,000 people between those just in that one year of growth. Uh, that one I came back from and was like, that's like a rock concert where I learned stuff. Like it was, that was the kind of experience. It was, it was fun. Like that's how it felt. Yeah. They rented out the Superdome. Yeah. They rented out the Superdome. You were on the field of the Superdome. They had, they had like mermaids. They had, if you go there, I mean like not real mermaids. Yeah. Yeah. Not just the party though, like they've had like DJs just in the hallway, like between sessions. It's just like you're between sessions. It's like it is over the time. Okay, okay. Um, fun. <laughs> it, I mean, and to answer your question, like it's a little bit, it's like it's not not a little bit different, but like fundamentally, I think the conference is the same aside from there's just fewer, there's like a fraction of the people that were there the last like before COVID and whatnot. So. Last year there was only I'd say about three thousand people there, but I felt like it was the quality over quantity, like the conversations that I could have with people better. Then it was just like every 
happens. There's a new person in front of your face. It's constant yeah. streams of people and not enough room anywhere. So I, I don't know what they're expecting this year. If I had to wager, I'd say it's about 5K. Yeah. Um, go watch Iron Viz. Yeah. If you've never been there, go watch it. Like this production value and the spectacle of it to see it in person is is worth not missing. <laughs> like, um, yeah, like I still remember the first time I saw it in Vegas, and it was in like the boxing arena at the MGM Grand, and, and it's like these three poor souls are standing up. That might have been the one Curtis was in standing up there on this stage in the middle of the boxing arena and like 10,000 people are screaming at them while they're trying to build a tableau dashboard. <laughs> it was like, I'm like, wow. That was when I was convinced that, that uh, Iron Riz is super cool and I never ever wanted to do it. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The two you don't want to miss are that's on stage and Iron Viz. And then depending on who like their sort of semi-famous speaker is, like they brought in Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson and Hannah Fry. Um, Who's it this year? I don't know. Have they announced it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But yes, I have seen some incredible keynote address. So keynote there's speakers. a question in the chat. In the chat, it says, are registration <laughs> waivers or sponsorships for TC unheard of? I'm a contractor right now, and my company is not willing to pay for it. It's not in my budget either. Um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so uh, you can apply to speak at the conference, and if you're selected, they pay for your ticket. Um, I don't know that, like, they don't do any just sort of like merit based waivers or sponsorships. Uh, they do do early bird discounts, which obviously is gone, right? But like when they first opened up registration in, registration in February, it was like a 10% discount or something. So, you know, it's like what, something like that. But right. I, it's worth, even if I had to pay like out of pocket, which, like, which technically I kind of am, this is my company, right? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I would still do it. I think it's worth it. Um, yeah, I know they they usually put out some some collateral as well. To sort of, it's almost like a form letter you could fill in about the things you're going to get out of it if you really want to try to make your yeah. But if you're a contractor, make your case. Help. It I, might not. I would yeah. just say if you're independent budget, contractor. like start a little savings account for next year, Alicia. <laughs> um, yeah, and we definitely have had. You know, so we're a, we're a, a partner and a consulting firm, and we send some people every year. But there have been some years where we could only send a few people. We had more than that number who wanted to go, um, and we have had people who are just like, "Well, I'm taking the time off, and I'm going to buy the ticket, and I'm going to go there myself anyway because yep. it is worth it to me." Um, so, and you know, it's it's Las Vegas, so if you're like, often it's not that expensive to get there there's lots of options to stay like if you had to go there on your own dollar like you could yeah. probably make it work um the excalibur is a walkable distance from the mgm and it's Dude. not super nice but it is super cheap the, <laughs> the, lesser, the rooms at the lesser with the, with the, the room block rate it's like 75 bucks a night yeah so i mean and you could get a Spirit play wouldn't recommend it, but you know you can do it on the cheap if you need to. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even know. I, 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 I no personal. I'd rather walk. I know. <laughs> Just drive there. Yeah, drive. <laughs> Does anybody have any specific questions about the conference or anything tableau related that we could spend our last few minutes trying to answer as a crowd? I do have one question. Are called in? Can you hear people out in the room here? Okay. Um, Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, For the most part, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. Jim, uh, Jim said we might do this in, in this room a few times. You know, well, so I want to know what, what, what yeah. So this is my, I just bought this right. from my yes. home desk because <laughs> I wasn't sure what was going to be here. There's a big conference call and I just wasn't sure how we would connect. So, um, just I bet at my home office, I'm at least that far away from this thing sometimes just okay. pacing. <laughs> So yeah, just speak up a little. I, it seemed like it has been okay for the most part. So that the comments would indicate. All right, All right. should we wrap it up? Yeah, we can. We can go ahead and adjourn if we're, if we're ready. Uh, those of you who are online, uh, thanks for joining. We'll post the recording when we figure out where to do that. Um, or where it goes after we hit the stop recording button. Uh, but we appreciate you joining us. Um, I can't really help you with uh, happy hour or beverages or anything like that because I don't know how to get them to you. Uh, but we will be here in some physical and virtual space again next month. Uh, so feel free to join us in person or, or virtually. And we appreciate you coming, and we'll talk to you next month. Do you know where the where, uh, next month is going to be? TV. Might be here. We don't know yet. <laughs> um, so thank you all. I'm going to stop recording. We're taking bids for the next That's right. <laughs>